Now I want to take this carb off because tomorrow I should have the parts coming in for this and a hose for the other one which I don't know if it needs a carb kit or not but this one's getting in the electronic cleaner tonight <laughs> and all right that comes out and just take the hose off and also the linkage the throttle linkage which just goes on right there so I think this has got a broken diaphragm in it or something I'm going to take the the high side out and leave the idle in take this thing off basically I'm going to leave this stupid thing pretty much together and just <laughs> wash it and see what happens and uh, change some parts And uh, I already got the parts for this thing coming, but if this is a Walbro 21-245 Space 1-1 McCulloch Pro Max 610, probably the same as a 650 or something too. And I could tell there's something wrong with this thing here. I knew there was something wrong with it. It's buggered up. <laughs> so goes like that. Probably only goes one way. And this little tab there goes right there, so you can, well, I guess you could put it another way, but. Hmm. I'm going to put this in here. Take a look at this side. <laughs> the freaking shitty gas, I did this a couple years ago, and the shitty gas screwed it up already. That's that ethanol shit. Well, I'm putting all the parts in here and uh, took this off. Which, the whole face is just a diaphragm. And uh, I could see what's, see the dirt down in there? See that all down in here? Dirt. So, anyway. I'm going to take out I'm going to take out the high side this one here and uh <laughs> look at that crap in there man holy shit that is why I wasn't getting full power I was getting about two thirds but this thing at half power or quarter power cuts pretty damn good. <laughs> that is why. When I first rebuilt it, it was going great. The carb, and since that time, I don't know, something happened with it. Some dirt someplace, probably in a filter. I'm going to put the filter in there too, in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. Make sure it's. It should be. Doesn't look like it's got any holes in it. Who the hell knows? <laughs> you know, I wonder if too, if uh, the way this thing uh, puts air in, it only goes through these two things. I wonder if these can be opened up a little more too. I mean, where's it coming out this side? No. It's kind of stupid, man, the way they got that. Because the filter sits in there like this. Yeah, I'm actually going to put a few holes in here because maybe a couple quarter inch holes right here. Maybe three, one, two, three. Be not through the whole cover, but because this way it comes in and it doesn't have, I don't know, maybe we just leave it alone. Maybe it's got, it blows in here a certain way. Maybe I'll leave it alone. Anyway, it's got enough power, so 
this thing, I could see what was wrong with it. It was running okay. I mean, it was running good, except for full power. It would cut out. It would, it would actually get up to about two thirds trigger, which on this saw, it's, that's quite a bit. This seems. Uh, that seems. I won't even take that out. I'm just going to take out the high side, and because uh, that's the side I couldn't adjust anymore to get it to work, and uh, let it run the electronic uh, ultrasonic cleaner for a couple 30 minute cycles along with that air filter and uh, when I get the carb kit in tomorrow it's going to be like brand new again that would be cool especially with the new paint ooh, ooh, wow so I got the little throttle open with the little screwdriver so you know maybe that'll help clean out get stuff out of there and the fuel inlet is facing up whatever I'll flip it around a couple different ways Heater on, unit on. Hmm. Look at that shit coming out of there. See that? Ooh wee. See the dirt? <laughs> I only put a couple ounces of uh couple ounces of awesome in there. Oh wow. Let me put this in here too. I'm going to run it probably three times. So, the thing makes a lot of noise when you first start it up. <laughs> Boy, this thing is going to run like a rape day. The piston on the thing is good. It's got good compression. The oiler works. It was just a little bit on a, after two thirds power it was cutting out. So the carb kit's coming tomorrow. Hmm. Anyway. So here I am, I'm doing this now, so, you know, like I do a little bit of every damn thing, right? I mean, it's like my channel is like, what do I do on this channel? I don't know. Depends on what I'm doing, right? <laughs> a little bit of everything. This thing's working on full throttle now, so I'm waiting on a stupid carb kit. Um, should I don't think I even sent it yet. <laughs> it's been delayed and delayed and delayed, so I put the old carb kit back in it, and I reused the gaskets, and which I don't really like doing, but what I did was one of the gaskets was split, I put some of the sealing on it, so, but that saw should be working good on full throttle. Um, actually one of the gaskets is leaking a little bit, so it's not, but yes, it's good to go, it's good to go. Tell you what, man, it's, it's kind of a pain in the ass trying to find, um, weight on these parts, man, it's pissing me off because it's like, I'd rather get the shit done, I don't like leaving things unfinished, so I put it back together, <laughs> because I think it's going to take another week for it, the parts to get here, but that was the problem, just a little bit of sawdust, and, uh, you notice on the air cleaner I, I got another one of these saws on bid right now I don't know if I'm gonna get it but I figure it might be not be a bad idea see the air cleaners nice and super clean I did that in the ultrasonic cleaner there's no holes in it or nothing I don't know why I don't know why the oilers working too you see that up there up there a little bit of oil that's working so automatic oiler is working this is a good firewood saw. This is not like a lumberjack saw. That's all it is. I figure if I got another one, you know, I can try to get another one. Um, that's the same as this. It's gonna have a shorter bar, but it's gonna be it's gonna be a Max 610. Because I figure if I I understand this saw really good, um, I'd rather have two of the same kind. This way, I gotta learn another one. And I'll have that little Mac Cat, which is a little lightweight one, which could probably cut some little firewood. Uh, I want to also to emphasize something else here. Um, I'll bring out this stuff. Uh, I see a lot of problems sometimes, and this is another tip I'm throwing in here. I've been seeing a lot of problems where some people have these really old saws, and they got a crack case, 
Like this doesn't have a crack case. It's just like you see, I painted up the side and everything. Now it's like this like sucker's pretty clean, man. Look at that shit. Ooh, it's pretty. Um, this stuff I think would fix your magnesium crack case, no problem. Because you know that's what I would do instead of buying a part. Um, I would chemically clean it, sand it down a little bit, uh, put this over the crack, and then maybe put. Uh, Maybe like press a real super thin gauge of like 24 gauge aluminum or something over that. Um, or maybe like um, even a, a screen, a metal screen. You know that? Like a, a window screen or something. And press that over a patch. See, so this had a crack over here, right? I would take this 3M panel bonding adhesive, part number 08115, because. This stuff is designed for gluing um, rocker panels on cars, quarter panels, door skins. Most of the cars today is glued together. So if you put, you had a crack, a hairline crack, say, in this case because you smacked it into something, I would, um, I would chemically clean it, sand it down, get it real super chemically clean, and then put this over it. And I'd probably put... Um, a screen maybe a screen so you got like a little bit of um like a window screen you know and then put some uh, gorilla tape over that so it's like smoothed out because when you're putting it on here you want to have it so it doesn't it stays in place I noticed like you put some gorilla tape over this it comes out smooth and stuff I think you'd have a good repair man because actually the case the parts on these saws now are pretty much plastic and what the hell why not you got a crack in some magnesium. Um, I don't know. I bet you that he, this adhesive would probably work. So I'm just going to throw that tip out there. Um, but if I get this other, if I don't get this other saw, I might. I don't know what I'm going to get. I might get a. I think it's called a Johnson Red. I want to get a Swedish saw. I don't want to get anything. <laughs> it's freaking uh, Chinese. <laughs> like this is an old USA saw, so these aren't too bad. But. Uh, it kind of pisses me off. I'm waiting for parts, man. I mean, shit. <laughs> anyway, but I didn't. I did not tune the carburetor, and you can see I was getting like full throttle. I didn't even freaking mess around with the high side. I just put it out of a turn and a half. Maybe it needs a two turns or something. But it wasn't doing that before. Uh, it would run good at half throttle or a little over half throttle, and then it would bog. It was some sawdust in there. I don't know how sawdust gets in there, but it gets in there somehow. Probably from the air filter or something. I really don't know, man. It gets in there somehow. Somehow. I guess these old air filters aren't as good as the new ones. But I got I ordered an extra carb kit besides the one I ordered that I'm still waiting on. Because I want to keep one on hand. Because I'm figuring the crappy gas is... If I can find real gas around here, I don't know if I can. Um, the crappy gas is going to keep destroying these carb kits and hoses and shit, so they're going to be constantly being changed. They're only like eight, nine bucks though, so not too bad. But everything on this thing works, and uh, if I get the other one, it's a duplicate of this with a 16 inch bar, which I think this is a heavy saw, but with a 16 inch bar up to about there, it wouldn't be that bad to tote around, you know. That bar weight on the end kind of makes a difference, even though it's a monster. It would be a great, this, I'd rather have them both the same. But I might get that, I think it's called a Johnson Red, the red one. I've seen some on eBay, but I'm kind of scared to buy shit off eBay, man. Freaking man, you don't know what the hell you're getting. You could luck out, and maybe, and maybe you won't luck out. But I'm figuring, if I got two the same, even if I had to change a piston, or do crank seals, or crank bearings, once you understand that, you're home free. I am don't want a freaking saw with this electronic carburetor. I've been hearing it's great, and it compensates for dirty air filter, or compensates for your gas uh, octane or whatever atmospheric conditions, how cold it is, or how much I don't know whatever humidity is or something maybe altitude. But I'm like. That's just something else to break. And I know the only reason they came out with that junk 
is because of EPA. And I'm thinking, what's the EPA really worrying about a freaking chainsaw? They don't want you cutting wood for firewood, man. You know what I mean? So if we have like an EMP or something, your chainsaw is not going to work, right? Because you'll have a circuit board in it. Well, that's a freaking crock of crap. So I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going for a new one, man. No, no way. So, but I want an old Swedish saw, maybe a German one, or the USA McCullers are pretty good. These bigger ones are pretty good.